Hi and hello everyone. What we have studied so far are all Markovian queuing systems as we have said and then uh, what we will consider next are what we call as semi Markovian queuing systems for which uh, the you know little bit of the background material required in terms of the underlying stochastic processes is what we have seen uh, in term uh, in the context of renewal processes and semi Marco processes. Okay. Now, with that ideas in mind, let us start our discussion of this semi Markovian queuing systems. As we said, so far, whatever we have considered, they are all assumed in, in some way or other with uh, dis distributions, whether it is inter arrival times or service time distributions or any other type of distributions like retrial distributions and so on or the retrial duration distributions or anything of that they were all either exponential or something that can be expressed in terms of exponential and hence finally it led to uh, a model which is basically a continuous time Markov chain. Okay. So, the Markovian analysis or Markov process analysis uh, like writing down the chapman goldman equations, forward goldman equations, solution of that would give you the system size probabilities and so on like was employed starting from the balance, you know, balance equation, identifying the Markov process. Then the balance equations can be written down immediately and then a solution will give you the solution to the queuing system from which the performance measures were obtained, right. This is what we have been doing it here. But now, what we will do is that we will relax this uh, exponential assumption okay, or anything related to exponential, we will not uh, you know assume that, we, will ass we can assume a general distribution right, which may be expressed as exponential then it will become a Markov chain. If it cannot be expressed in terms of exponential distributions like an Erlang case or phase state case and so on, uh, if it is not of that type then still it can be handled under this framework right and for many the queuing theory actually you know the real power or the real utility or the real use comes from the analysis of uh, models of semi Markovian type because this is what really you know you are going beyond a simple Markov process analysis okay. So, model becomes complex. So, you know you will not be able to obtain in many cases explicitly the distributions of the system sizes right and then the associated you know problems whatever are the complexities that, that, that are there with the analysis of such terms would also play a role okay. So, when we relax then we involve a general distribution. So, the queues are no longer they are continuous time Markov chain models and the methodology or approach that we have used to analyze such systems is no longer applicable here ok. That is what uh, will happen in such scenario, but what we will do is that uh, you know for now at least for the next uh, you know few lectures what we will do is that we will relax the exponential assumption in a phase by phase manner meaning that we will relax for example, we are as typically assuming that at a simple uh, type of queue where no other features are there say a m amount type kind of. Then what we will do? We will relax the assumption of exponential only either in arrival process or with respect to the service process meaning that either the inter arrival time or service time distribution we will assume to be a general distribution which is not exponential or anything related to exponential it could be general. Uh, but not both ok. So, that is the first step you know, as always you know you go step by step. So, what we will do first relax this assumption only in one of those either in uh, arrival process or in the service process. So, the resulting queuing models right would be called as semi Markovian queuing models because you still retain some amount of Markov nature within the structure. Right. Okay. You still have on one side either in the service time or in the inter arrival time you still have an exponential distribution whether that is of some help you know we will figure it out 
okay so because of that nature because we are relaxing in only one of them so we have semi markov models and within this context of this semi markovian cues we will come across what we call embedded markov chains we have already exhibited this embedded markov chain even within the markovian process okay uh, in the beginning itself what would be the because we define ctmc you know in terms of this embedded markov chain right and this embedded markov chain embedded within a continuous time but now a non markov process right we have already seen in the semi markov process like how the markov chain we are getting it as an embedded in a semi markov process right and we can employ then some of the theory of markov chains to analyze the cues that's what you know we are going to do okay and we are going to use this embedded markov chain technique for our analysis but there are other equally you know efficient uh, methodologies available for analysis of such system one such uh, quantity is what is called as supplementary variables techniques okay this is also quite popular uh, you know this is a way of extracting a markov process uh, from a non markov process okay you look at the non markov process and you define what are the additional random variables you know and you make uh, the dimension of the process a bit more like from one dimension to two dimension or three dimension and so on and then so that in two dimension then that will be a markov process okay so and then you analyze that so possibly complexity would increase uh, but the analysis can be done using markov so basically that's what is supplementary variables you add you supplement additional random variables or random processes to define and then together they will form a markov and then you can analyze the markov so that's the basic idea of supplementary variable technique and also there are other methods like commutative approaches uh, you know even the integral equation approach which is applicable for a general general model in both side general you know that's kind of thing can also be you know used for such analysis of such semi markovian queuing systems okay so but you know we will be concerned with this embedded markov chain technique only uh, a note here is sometimes you know in some authors would call this as embedded markov chain but it's one and the same so we are using this spelling anyway this is always uh, you know choice like even with queuing the spelling you know there is a choice right in the same way okay so so that's the background right semi markovian queuing systems so where the natural processes that arise are semi markov processes and hence we are calling this as semi markovian queuing systems and within that semi markov process we know that there is an embedded markov chain and using that you know we will try to you know, analyze uh, give analysis of the entire queuing system using such kind of uh, embedded markov chain technique okay that's what you know we are going to do okay in that uh, analysis of the semi markovian queues the first and the most important queuing system in the whole of queuing theory in terms of its simplicity it may be mm1 but in terms of its importance right the most you know applicable or most useful queuing model is this mg1 queues okay so that is the model that we consider so what are the assumptions it has all the assumptions of the mm1 model except that the service time distribution is now a general non negative distribution i mean a generally uh, general distribution but which is is with support in the non negative real line okay so since we are in the continuous time model so that's what you know we we'll say okay rather than the exponential which is also a non negative random variable case right so but now we are taking any general distribution you can think about it you need not even name it okay because you know in statistics and probability in statistics like there are plenty of distribution uh, anything that comes up you can take it as it is and try to analyze that's what is the advantage when you consider or give the theory for with keeping in mind g again you know you have the arrival process is poisson process which mean the interval times are for iid exponential the service time distributions are iid okay but they follow now a general distributions but still they are iid okay 
Now, if you count the number of service completions in, in interval 0 to t in such a situation, or situation, then what you are going to get is a renewal process, right. So, that is why this is you know renewal service time, renewal service process is what renewal process is what is coming out as service process because we are just you know relaxing the exponential assumption, we are keeping all other things within that service process, right. So, that is what uh, you know you would see here. And these two things, the arrival process and service process, they are independent and you have an infinite capacity for queuing and you are assuming first come first serve queuing discipline. All these assumptions are there like in an MM1 system in this MG1 system as well. Now, let us call lambda be the arrival rate of copy this of the Poisson process arrival. Now, let us call S to denote the random service time or the random variable denoting the service time duration which is non-negative and 1 by mu be its mean or mu which is 1 over expectation of s be its service rate. The rate of service is you know mu, so 1 by mu is its mean like with the similarity with uh, you know mm1 or in the exponential case we will call 1 by mu as its mean. Okay, not mu as the mean. So, you remember that. Okay. So, the assumption which we need to make uh, okay, for the equilibrium analysis, we said that we are not going to look at the transient distribution, but we are looking at the equilibrium distributions uh, or the steady state analysis of the system. So, for which then you need the stability condition which is basically this, which, which we can, it can be proved later. Right. We may not even do that, but it is quite uh, easy and easily to you can understand that you know you need such a condition even from the very simple intuitive idea that the arrival rate and service rate right with respect to that itself you know you can uh, see that this condition is necessary. So, this condition it will be assumed to hold for the equilibrium analysis to hold. Now, this analysis of MG1 is you know a bit substantially in a way is difficult as compared to uh, the simple MM1 model. Uh, the reason being that the state description in MM1 system, when you want to analyze an MM system, in the you just need to define one quantity and that is the number of customers in the system okay. uh, that at an arrival point, you know that is what you know you want us to look at it. But since uh, there any other point is like any other point in some sense in the Markovian system because of this Markovian system and that is because of the memoryless property of the exponential distribution. Like when the customer arrives like what is the remaining duration of the customer who suppose some customer is undergoing service and if you are looking at what is the remaining duration that will also be exponential. Right. How long he has been in service that will also be an exponential right. So, because of you know such things like you know you just need you do not need to keep looking at the uh, service how much service has been done with the server who was currently in service ok. But you know, because the exponential you could treat it as if you know the service has started just then. So, so you just need the number in the system alone which was much easier. But for mg 1 q the general state description would require specification of not just the number of customers in the system, but also the amount of service that is already provided to customer being served when an arrival takes place to the system. Because now you do not have the memoryless property any longer because you know that exponential distribution is the only distribution that has this memoryless property, right. So, now you need to keep. So, Typically, even in a very simple sense like it will become a two dimensional one, one is the number in the system, the other is amount of service already provided to customer being served when an arrival takes place. So, that is what uh, would happen here. So, because of I mean the main part because why this analysis become difficult is because you need to keep additional informations in mind if you want to describe the state ok. So, that is the reason ok. Now, what we will do first is that we will not directly look at the system state distributions uh, immediately. What we will do is that we will try to derive directly the 
expected value measures are the mean value measures of effectiveness or mean performance measures or mean, mean performance metrics which in this case basically what we have in L, LQ, W, W, Q like what we had in the case of MM1, Q this is what we are interested in. Okay. So, we will directly derive these results for these four quantities and these formulas which is a collection in a way because it can be expressed in different forms. Okay. Uh, these formulas are known as Polachek Kinchin formula or PK formula uh, and since there are two such formulas which are typically there, we will call this as PK mean formula because this is connecting the mean values of the system. Okay. There is another one which we will later we will simply refer to that also as PK formula, but that will be the PK formula, but that will also be called as PK transform formula because it relates the transforms of the distributions. So, here it is only mean. So, we can to be specific we may call this as PK mean formula, Polakchek Kinchin mean formula is what we have. What we will do? We will obtain one of them. You can obtain for example, any one of them and the others can be obtained using the usual relationship that exists between these four quantities. Okay. We will derive the first derivation okay, uh, by considering system at times when the customers arrive at the system, but there could also be a second derivation where you look at the system where uh, at the point of departures of customers and same thing can also be derived. So, we will first derive uh, this part which is basically at the arrival instance. Okay. So, what we will do now is we will derive this uh, PK mean formulas using arrival times or looking at the system at the arrival instance. Now, consider a customer who is arriving to this queuing system we will call the customer she. So, her delay is determined by the customers who are already in the system when she arrives. Okay. So, look at an arriving customer. So, how much is going to be her delay in the system? It will be determined by the customers who are already in the system when she arrives. In particular, there may be customers in the queue and there may be a customer already in service. Okay. There are two possibilities. Now, let us consider the customers in the queue at the time of her arrival. Okay. So, what is the delay that each of these customers contribute to her delay in the, in the system? Right? So, each customer who is in the queue ahead of her contributes on an average expectation of yes, the mean service time to her delay. So, how many are there ahead of her? So, there are on average LQ customers in the queue when she arrives. Okay. Now, remember this is LQ is the number of customers at an arbitrary point of time. Okay. Now, because in this particular system the arrivals are Poisson and Poisson arrivals see time averages that means the pasta property. So, the number of customers that an arriving customer sees in front uh, ahead of him is also the same as the number of customers at an arbitrary point of time and hence the mean number of customers that an arriving customer sees in front of her uh, in the system is also LQ. So, this property holds only under the Poisson arrivals or wherever this pasta property holds. So, arrival also sees LQ much like an arbitrary uh, customer, arbitrary time point view of the system. Okay. So, since each of these customer contributes expectation of S and there are LQ number of customers in the system when uh, she arrives at the system. So, the average delay, the total average delay due to these customers who are waiting in front of uh, her when she arrives since we are following FCFS discipline. So, this will be LQ times expectation of X. This is a one component of the waiting time. Okay. Now, the customer who is in service, 
like if there is anyone in the service if undergoes when she arrives contributes a different amount of uh, to her delay a different amount of time to her delay okay so this customer what he has already completed part of his service so the his contribution to her delay is his remaining service time not his total service time this would have been the case total service time in case of exponential but now since that is not the case so whatever is the remaining service time that is the contribution of that customer to her delay in the system okay so combining these two the average queue wait which is wq for this arriving customer is basically wq is lq of uh, multiplied by expectation of x plus the expected residual service time given that the server is busy okay if the server is free obviously they don't have anything here because that's zero because they don't contribute anything and that, that will happen only if the queue space is also empty right but if server is busy then only like this residual service time comes so this when server is busy. so now if i use lq equal to lambda times wq here uh, to eliminate lq and then rearranging the terms what you would get is wq to be probability of server being busy multiplied by expected residual service time given that the server is busy divided by 1 minus rho where rho is basically uh, lambda by mu or lambda times expectation of s right so we know rho is lambda by mu or lambda times expectation of s is what we already know okay so that's what is this quantity so because you just have to this is what will give you this one actually there's nothing great about it okay so this is what we have here so now in the above probability of server busy is basically the probability of the arriving customer finds the server busy now again by the pasta property this is the same as the fraction of time the server is busy so server is busy is then equal to rho right so this is again pasta property is used here to interpret this quantity as being equal to rho because of again pasta property right so this part we have now computed to be rho now what is remaining here is this quantity expected residual time given that the server is busy so we need to find that now it can be shown that particular quantity is simply expectation of s square by twice expectation of x you recall we did this uh, when we studied the renewal process we considered the excess lifetime or the residual lifetime or remaining lifetime and we showed that in the limiting case right the mean of either residual lifetime or the you know one of them residual lifetime or the age in for both of them they were equal and it is given by this quantity so that's a standard result in renewal theory that's what we said and we have given that even we have given the distribution as well and from there one can easily obtain this but one can also obtain alternative it doesn't matter but we have already seen this result okay so this is what is obtained to be this quantity okay now this you can write it by multiplying and dividing by an expectation of s yes. you know you can easily show that this is also equal to this okay 1 plus cb square what is cb square or c square b is this squared coefficient of variation we know coefficient of variation is the standard deviation divided by the mean right that's what is this so you can just show that you know you can write this in terms of this right in terms of the scv this is called squared uh, coefficient of variation this is abbreviated as scv so the cb squared is the squared coefficient of variation of the service distribution uh, this is which is basically given by 
this quantity, right? So this is expectation of yes, the whole square. That's what you're writing it as e square. Okay. So this is basically you can recall as I just said that you know we have already seen this result. So this is what it is. Now I can plug this everything here. Okay. Now you see here this is you know leads to some counterintuitive uh, idea. What you expect you know in an intuitive way is that the residual service time when the server is busy, you expect that to be expectation of S divided by 2, this quantity alone or the first term half of expectation of S. Okay. So, in general this quantity is strictly greater than expectation of S by 2, right? that is unless this is the case. So, this is, this is the case when, when this C square B will be equal to 0 is you can have only in the case of a deterministic situation where the variance would be equal to 0 right? or a degenerate distribution case unless that is the case. For all other distribution, the expected remaining service time as seen by an arriving customer arriving to a busy server is more than half of the expected service time. This is also known as the inspection paradox or paradox of residual life. Okay. So, this is uh, one could one can give a little reasoning that it is because of the customers are more likely to arrive during long service intervals compared with shorter ones uh, that brings the bringing the average above expectation of S by 2. So, this is a bit counterintuitive. Of course, there can be another I mean many reasonings and why this happening can be given here, but this is what you know you, you would observe. You could observe that this one expected residual service time when server is busy right, of the customer who is undergoing service as seen by an arriving customer is basically more than the average or the half of the average waiting time. right? So, that is is what is a, is a paradox of course, probability theory is full of paradoxes and this is also possibly one, but this is a bit counterintuitive, but in many such results of course, holds true in queuing context or in any other case as well. right? So, that is what you are observing. Now, when you plug that here finally, combining everything what you will arrive at is this expression. Okay. Now, look at this expression that this has three terms, okay. a variability term because this coefficient of variation is really a measure of variation. right? So, the variability term and a utilization term connected with the utilization server utilization and the time scale term which is expectation of s okay so this involves the squared coefficient of variation of the service time distribution now we know for exponential distribution this is exactly equal to 1 and in this in that particular case this quantity will become exactly equal to 1. So, this first term which is the variability term will be exactly equal to 1 uh, leaving us with only this quantity and we know expectation of S is 1 by mu. So, it is rho over mu times 1 minus rho which is exactly the, the WQ that you would obtain in an MM1 Q. Right? So, this is reduces to the analogous formula for an MM1 Q. So, if this is the analogous formula for MM1Q, then you can also think about, think of this WQ as if it composing of two terms, one is this term which is connected with the variability, the other one is the corresponding formula of an MM1Q. Right? So, you can also think about this as, uh, as if the product of these two terms. Okay. Now, this one, the second term here is basically is the Q utilization and of course, this increases to infinity as rho tends to 1 we have seen. So, the last term has units of time and can be thought of a time scale factor because these are all you know independent of time scale because this is also independent of time this is. So, WQ should have a time scale factor which is what you know would come here from here. Okay. So, thus WQ is the product of two time quantities that are independent of time scale and the time dependent quantity which is expectation of x. Right? This is a powerful result 
what you need to know to get WQ which is the mean uh, waiting time in the queue in an MG1 system is you need the arrival rate, you need the mean of the service time distribution and you need the squared coefficient of variation or coefficient of variation of the service distribution which is c square b. So, I need lambda, I need mu, I need c square b. So, only these three parameters are needed to compute w q. Now, once I compute w q then using Little's law and or this relationship which we already know that exists between w q and w, uh, we can obtain the other performance measures easily. So, once w q is obtained l q w l can be obtained using these relationships right uh, like much like in the usual case that we can handle. Now, once we do this then we can write it down or put this in this table form which we will refer to as the table of p k mean formulas or Polacek uh, Kinchain mean formula for the m g 1 q and this shows several ways of expressing the same result ok. We just obtained w q in this manner. So, we wrote w over rho over 1 minus rho times 1 by our expectation of s which is basically 1 by mu. So, that will give you this expression right. So, the, the here you know we are the rows correspond to either l q or w q or w or l right the columns correspond to different ways of expressing in terms of quantities say for example, this column second column expresses the, the performance measures in terms of lambda mu and c b square ok. And here it is lambda mu and expectation of s square that means, the second moment of the service time distribution that is the third column here. So, here everything involves expectation of s square and here it involves the service distribution which is the uh, variance of the service distribution which is sigma square b right. It is just the same formula, but expressed using different quantities. If I know lambda and mu are needed in all cases, only the third quantity whether it is the variance of the service time distribution or the second moment of the service time distribution or the SCV of the service time distribution in terms of that you know you can write out. If you know one of them of course, you know you will know uh, all of them there is no problem at all, but you can always transform between one to the other very easily right. So, this is what we have obtained. Now, the same corresponding quantity in terms of expectation of s square if I write it will be equal to this right. You can simply have to substitute to here and then simplify you will get this and the same quantity if I have to write in terms of sigma square b then I will get this expression right. So, this is w q and from w q I can get l q right using lambda times w q business. So, I will get this expression and equivalently this and this in the other two cases and once I have this w or w q then again I can get w as well plus 1 by mu plus 1 by mu plus 1 by mu that is all you know you will get to w q. Then once I have this then this is also l q plus rho. So, this is l q plus rho is what then you will get here which is also can, can be obtained as lambda w. So, lambda w also you can imply you get this expression. So, it is once you obtain one expression you know you can in fact you know you do not need to remember that uh, you can easily obtain the other quantities whether it is you obtain this that is what we did you can go this direction or you can go this other direction. Now, once I have this then I can go this direction in from each of these very easy you do not need to remember this you just need to understand the one component which is basically this quantity right how this is uh, obtained it here and this approach is known as the residual lifetime approach and this is applicable only to apply uh, to get the mean results ok. If you are interested in distributions of uh, the number in the system or waiting time distributions then you cannot apply this approach. So, this is a way of obtaining and this is you know you, you see that from the renewal theory something we are using it here to arrive at the mean value. So, in queuing uh, theory 
uh, many a time like you know you um, employ the mean value approaches meaning to directly obtain the mean values like in you have did for a queuing network case the mean value analysis algorithm such, such kind of thing. So, here also we obtain directly without you know, going into the distributions we directly obtain the mean value measures. So, this is a quite powerful tool or the idea that you know you can employ very effectively if you are interested only in the mean value measures ok. So, that is what you know we did here uh, let us look at quickly like uh, a special case it is not really an example it is a special case suppose if you have an M E K Q 1 Q means G is E K then the S C V of E K is 1 over K from the way we have defined right or the coefficient of variation is 1 over root k the squared coefficient of variation is 1 over k. Now, if I substitute this then w q I will get this which coincides with the earlier results ok. Similarly, we can obtain the m d 1 result either from this we know that by letting k is infinity or now directly in this right by taking the squared coefficient of variation because variance is equal to 0. So, accordingly you know you will get the measures from here which for the m d 1 q or any other distribution now what you need is mean and variance or mean and squared coefficient of variation or mean and the second moment first moment and second moment of the service time distribution. So, these are the two things that you need in order to get the mean value measures that is the bottom line when you employ this uh, ideas that we have here ok. So, you know this is what is what is called as residual lifetime approach to obtain the mean value measures in the case of an mg 1 q. Uh, this is where you know we will stop and then we will then take it up later the case of obtaining the distribution uh, of in the case of an mg 1 type this is only the mean value measures which directly one can apply. Uh, employ to get the things that is what you know our intention to show at this point ok. So, we will see later uh, thank you bye.